everybody. We are here with uh, the first run for group number three, and well, after some slight technical difficulties, we are we're ready to rock and roll. As I was kind of saying, we're going to start you guys off right at the meet, just because you know you you guys don't exist yet. So I can be like, ah, oh, the meet's in like six hours. Do you guys do anything? And then you guys go, no, because you don't have money. Unless there's something you guys want to do beforehand that is not a uh, a character generation thing because things like summoning well things like binding spirits would have been a, a character generation kind of thing that that kind of deal so i'll go ahead and attach a rocket launcher to my drones but other than that yeah that's it's nothing yo we can have conversations about rocket launchers later on trust me i used to carry a golf bag of them it's great you say that as though there's another use for golf bags i'm confused I mean, I had the golf knowledge skill. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys have been called up by your fixer. Um, did we give him an actual name? Uh, yeah, no. He, we decided he was going to be Larry Fourfingers. Um, just a little bit of information about him. He is Japanese. His left hand only has four fingers. Um, he has let you guys know that at his usual meeting spot tonight he set you up with like a big league job it's not super crazy but he promises a good payday inside the message is a geo point which is a little spot down in touristville called the honey pot which is where he likes to do a lot of his um criminal meetings it is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It is a strip club that is bee themed. They have like honey mead and the serving girls wear little like black and yellow skirts and little dealy boppers for antennae and stuff. It's it's terrible, but it's got a theme and that's where he likes to, to have his, his meetings. So the, the five of you are in one of the little side private rooms around an eight-sided table with a pole in the middle awaiting uh, your Johnson for the night. If we want to just kind of go like sitting or as they would be sitting around the table just giving a quick physical description of, uh, of who we got sitting here. I'll go in the middle because that'd probably be towards the back. It's up to you guys. Doesn't have to be Okay, well, we start in the back then, I guess. Um, in in the back, you've got like a somewhat short, very gender ambiguous person in the black coat. I say gender ambiguous because at the moment, I imagine I, I think he's going to be a guy, but I just every time I imagine my character, it's a girl. So I might take advantage of that drastic changes between session thing you told me about for the first session. Um, I mean, I'm not judging you for any kind of part that you might be in your life, but there's totally <laughs> stuff for that. Yeah, no, I <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but I mean, just kind of vaguely, you, you can see through the the hood. I've got like halfway up. Like um, I have a uh, no hair on the right side of my head, and it's all just rigor gear. You're a Skrillex with weird uh, blue and green glowing spots. You're a Skrillex. Other than that, very very plain looking. But you know, those things make him not plain looking. I hear having part of your head glow is, is pretty... Well, can be pretty. Who else nah. we got sitting around this table? The first. So Dante is roughly 5 foot 10. Right now he's wearing a gray uniform. Uh, his hair, he's got blonde hair and blue eyes. Blonde hair is brushed over to one side right now. Arms crossed. A little bored. Just waiting, wanting to get stuff done. Other than that, he looks almost completely mundane. Just like Rox, who's actually looking kind of uncomfortable. A bald dwarf with, uh, let's say, like an, like my avatar. He looks basically like my avatar on Roll20. With a weirdly weird and like shining crystal uh, uh, earring that seems to sort of... Uh, not fit his persona. Other than that, he sort of 
sits around and looks uncomfortable, dressed in like a brown coat and and such. Meter fifty. And then last, but certainly not smallest. Exactly. Uh, that would be Sue. Uh, he's going to be about nine and a half feet tall. Uh, his skin would be Caucasian pale. Uh, the hair is uh, ginger, bright, bright red. Um, the hair is... Uh, pulled back into, um, it's knotted, locked up, and pulled back into a, a small bun at the back of his head. He's going to be wearing a, a mid to high end uh, suit in charcoal gray, not visibly armed. Um, let's see. Oh, the eyes would be a, a very light sea green, a very Nordic appearance. And you guys are sitting there for uh, a couple of minutes. Let's, uh, let's ask a very important question that we perhaps should have covered last week. What time of the year do you guys want to start in? Any preference at all? Eh, fall. Um, fall sounds fine. Fall. Um, my character, Hex, she's going to be standing about, well, I guess sitting about 5'4", uh, wearing a kind of black jumpsuit. Sort of like what they had on Kill Bill, only with a yarn, a yellow stripe going down the side, with a uh, long black hair, obviously Asian. All right, so it's uh, let's make it just the beginning of the holiday season. So we'll, let's do uh, let's do end of September, just when Christmas rush is starting. Ugh. <laughs> Woo! More traffic to dodge. Sounds fun. Right. Um, Are we missing one? Uh, I believe Evan said that he wasn't going to be able to be here for the first night, which would should be Kung Fu Monk. Okay. Really, our Kung Fu Monk is missing. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, apparently real life is is the worst, but you know, he'll have recordings that he can watch, and he'll be right up to speed next week. So you guys have this meeting set for 6 p.m. tonight. It is about 6.02 when you hear the door open. And in walks a uh, average height, average looking Japanese man in a, um, in a suit that is probably just a couple of months out of style from two years ago. He's got one hand in his pocket, and the other hand he's pushing his, his greasy hair all the way back, and he sees you guys, and he just gets a giant smile. Uh, now, Rob, can I just quickly ask you uh, about like a real-life check? Is a sensing visible, and is it considered rude if... if uh, it, is, it is 100% rude, because you are staring into somebody's soul and reading their emotions. Sure, so I will not do that. Okay. Um, it is also the kind of thing that if somebody is aware of, like, if you're, like, across a smoky bar and you want to ascend somebody on the other side, they're probably not going to see you given the funny look. But, like, somebody who is, uh, one, aware of what it looks like when mages do that kind of weird stuff, or somebody that's just like, why are they giving me the stink eye? Um... They're gonna they're gonna pick up on it if they can get sure, a good sure. valuable information. Yes, yes. right at the start. So he'll come in, big smile, like ah, great! I knew I could count on you guys to be here. Just see, and he turns and looks out the door, talking to somebody else. See, they're right here. They're a great group of people. Come on, come in. Uh, in walks a human woman in a very professional and. Um, not like flashy style, but very just classic and trimmed business suit. Uh, every bit of her hair that is pulled back in a ponytail is like in perfect place. Uh, she looks a little deadpan as she comes in, looks to him with a look of like, I don't know, just a little like, 
I don't like this guy kind of look. And then we'll kind of look around the table of the taking you guys in. Do you have any kind of response? Anything you guys want to do here? I do have a little bit of a uh, an open roll policy. If you guys want to roll anything, just throw it in the uh, the chat bar there. Like perhaps maybe a a judge intentions to get a little bit more information out of that look that she just gave him. Or um, yeah, are there there are some spare chairs around this? Did you say? Uh, there's probably like. I imagine around the whole back of it, not facing the door, is just kind of like a big horseshoe. Around sure, so if, if I wanted to roll uh, Judge Intentions and I have an 11 there, it's an 11d6, right? Yep. yep. And then after the, the greater than 5 part, you can write Judge Intentions, and this way it'll show up on the, the table, and I will be able to look at it and remember what it was for. Um, I'm going to uh, stand up. Uh, if there's a chair that I can pull out, I'll do that. Um, otherwise, I'm just standing. Uh, what's judge intentions? Charisma and intuition. Okay. So four hits from that judge. And let's see about the other one, so I can just do you guys kind of both at the same time. Um, there's not so much um, extra chairs in here because it's, well, you're in a strip club. And that's not exactly, uh... Not where Mrs. Johnson wants to be, I imagine. No. Uh, so, Rot, you get a little bit of the idea that, um... Maybe it's just in the way that Larry is kind of carrying himself. Maybe it's a little bit in that look. Maybe it's something that you've gotten from him before, but, uh... He has probably said or done something that's put her into a little bit of a foul mood. He might have hit on her. And she does not find that, uh lack of professionalism great do we know the guy I mean is he like a new uh, totally new person for us or did he need uh, no. Oh no the guy is your fixer the guy is Larry yeah, sure so, so can I like deduce the fact that he does really hit on everyone like female everyone <laughs> I was about to say not everyone just just the ladies um, that's probably something of your first intention your your first interaction. He probably hit on Hex. Just gonna throw that out there because you are Japanese and, and he is also Japanese. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yeah. He probably actually pulled the fake uh, not speaking English thing and then tried to talk to you in Japanese. And then once like you guys were successful, he dropped the act. <laughs> um... Hello, kid. So, what does the client look like? Human, female, blonde hair, very well put together. Every single hair in her ponytail is in a in place, and looks very stone faced. Did you say Elvin? Human. Okay. Um, when I judged uh, intentions, did I notice anything? Not much more than what uh, you guys already got with the two hits. Rock got, four, like, four. Rock got like four so he got a little bit extra information out of it you guys presumably will also have some kind of direct neural interface connection set up so that you guys can brain text message each other so you can have like little conversations um, at the time anytime you guys want to like time out Zach Morris style pause the action and have a little DNI text message Sure. So, but but I have like uh, I have goggles to see. I don't have any uh, like cyberware, so I would only listen to those conversations. Not exactly text message or like see anything because I'm not sitting up with my goggles on looking at it. Um, you can use a sub vocal mic, which basically you just attach to your neck, and you kind of if you just barely make noise, they can hear you. Perfect. Everyone around, Everyone around you that's connected to this. Uh, uh, network can hear you perfectly fine. But, yeah. Sure, sure, but I'm not like, you know, image messaging or anything, just in case someone wants to know. No, no. You guys have pretty, uh, pretty easy for you guys to communicate, so. Um. Yeah, so, um, Hex, not having been out of her, uh, out from under her corporate overlords too much, looks at the other girl's face and says, 
Yeah, he tried that with me too. You probably put him in his place, didn't you? Kind of smiles a little bit. <laughs> She'll uh, she won't make much of a response to that, but he is definitely going to look at you with that like, I, I would never. They're like, <laughs> you just kicked my dog. How dare you? Hex kind of shoots a coy grin to the rest of the group. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, she will uh, kind of nods like thank you this will do and then he'll kind of look from her to you guys with a smile that you know it shakes a little bit but it, it sticks it's like right right got plenty of work for you guys to do and he's going take a couple of steps back out of the room I'll just be over here at the bar if you uh, y'all need anything all right, thanks so much, Larry. Ma'am, my name is Sue. It is a pleasure to meet you. The door is very slow to close, as if to hear the, the beginning of the conversation until uh, until a moment or so goes by, and then it shuts the rest of the way. She's going to kind of eyeball that over the shoulder. And uh, do you extend a hand, or do you just introduce yourself? I'm extending a hand. She will... Uh, shake it give you a very for a for a, a human lady to a giant a very firm pump or two just like mm. okay johnson do i need to specify um oh shit i forgot my voice um do i need to specify that i'm being gentle no i'm le i'm actually going to assume as you are a giant person that you are not going to attempt to destroy every person and thing that you touch by accident Right, okay. Mm. She is perhaps being a little bit more like if you were human, it'd have been a it'd have been a solid handshake. She's not not that she probably could with a handshake crush your hand, but not like a um not like a wishy washy handshake, more of like a this means business handshake. Okay, sure. It's like, well, we have many things to discuss in this briefing and a lot of uh a lot of new faces around here that I don't know and that's good for you because if I don't know you then other people don't know you and that is why I'm hiring you I'm going to be short and to the point I have intel that there is going to be an assassination attempt on someone that I would really prefer to not be dead and she's going to look around for a moment to see if there's any kind of like immediate <gasps> kind of kind of reaction I, I mean, I assume all of us sort of worked in the shadows at least a little bit up until now. So, no immediate reaction. Rob is just like looking at it like, okay, you do what I have to do. She'll look around the table for a second. It's like, good. I know that usually you are the folks that are the kind of folks that are hired to end lives and not save them. Hopefully, today we can come to a agreement on doing something better for the world. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. But you said you had the intel. I do. There has been a not-so-covert threat laid against someone that I would prefer to see see another sunrise. So, yeah, how much yeah. can you tell us? For now, I can tell you a few things. After we have come to an agreement, I can tell you significantly more. Note that silence and your discretion is paramount on this mission. Of course. Well, I assume everyone sort of smiles a little bit at that comment, since, you know, it's almost understood, maybe? All right, we're going to get right down to business then. The number is 13,000 New Yen. The timeline is through. Uh, let's let's for giggles make this a Monday. Uh, uh. And then is through one week from now. The person in question needs to be able to get onto an airplane and leave Seattle. At which point, I will release your money through escrow into your own accounts. And then she's going to stand, stand straight up stand and kind of up. fold her hands behind her back. 
Now, Rob sort of looks around if anyone's talking before him because I'm expecting the, our faces to talk first. The number of us is 13,000. She'll give you a stiff this nod. Is, this is for each of us, yes. Another stiff nod. And there's a person who is to remain alive for seven days. They must be allowed to board an airplane. Does Are we responsible be? for delivering them to the plane? Or simply guaranteeing that they are alive to meet it? There is a, a group or a person that is set out, probably similar to you, to end this person's life. If they get on that plane safely and they leave Seattle, you will be paid. However you However accomplish you are... this task, I do not care. Only that it becomes accomplished. Does the person need to actually fly out of Seattle? Or just boarding the plane is fine? <laughs> you get a, mess, a little, like, little crackling voice in your head. Maybe that was a little bit too uh, threatening. Once they leave Seattle airspace, it will no longer be your concern. Dante's going to sit forward and nod a bit and ask, what do we need? Sorry. Why not just put her on the plane now? Or put them on the plane now? Why is it seven days from now? What do you need us to do in that time frame? They have a handful of appointments that they must keep, which will come in the further briefing. So, I understand this person doesn't know that we're protecting, or we will be protecting it? At current, they do not know about this situation. Will they? I have no plans for me and my official, and she says it with a little bit of a sneer, comrades to, to alert them. Now, did she All use right. the word comrades? Uh... Yeah, she probably used the word comrades, but you don't get any other, like, Russian accents or anything out of her. She doesn't even look Russian. So you want us to protect him without him knowing that we're protecting him? Ideally, that would be how it would go down. However, should needs arise and you must extract him and keep him safe and then sit on him until the, uh, the time at which he leaves... I will have contact information provided for you so that you may let me know and that you may provide she's going to think for a moment clearance with the target so as to know where you are coming from do you have intel on the opposition she's going to pause for a moment I will share with you what intel I do have Dante nods and leans back. Goes, I'm satisfied. Sounds straightforward enough. Agreed. Rod sort of looks at his 800 new yen and then slowly nods. The concern I have is that you wish to, st to come to an agreement on the figure without knowing who the person is, without knowing what the opposition is, or the reasons they are trying to have him eliminated. So look down it. Not down you, but at you for a moment. She's still standing. Knowing that, did she? Can I? Can I judge if did she like respond to that in any way? To that I'm thing? about to. I'm about. So she's gonna like stand there for a moment after you kind of like give her a little something back, and she's gonna narrow the eye a little bit. Just like mm. you kind of get the idea that she's not used to having people question her. I kind of cut in, maybe trying to save face in the situation, and I'm just, I, I say, uh, well, hold on. You're paying a lot of money to avoid questions being asked. That's a, that's a thing that happens a lot in business. I think we can all understand that. Maybe trying to divert her anger and saying that we understand. There are certain parameters of the mission that should 
they become commonplace knowledge could it jeopardize further information not the least of which is if I were to tell you the person in question and you were to decline the job and then word got out on the street that someone was looking to prevent an assassination it would make further teams that I attempt to hire significantly more difficult hmm I understand your position good good Sub sub vocally, I would like to sort of communicate to the rest. Sure. Does that mean that when she actually says who's trying to kill the person, that it's going to be harder to earn people? Because I imagine there are runners who would like that kind of jobs. Why harder? Uh, just out of character, real quick. If let's say, let's say I was flipping this and I was hiring you guys to kill this person, and you guys found out that, hey, there are people that are working to make sure we can't kill this person. It would change up the things that you would probably attempt to do. You know, maybe maybe you would go for a less direct kill attempt because you now have to worry like, oh, well, they would be expecting that. So we got to we got to do this so that they don't expect this. But if they expect this, then I got to do that. It just puts a lot more... Uh, Okay, so it's natural. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah. So, if they're not expecting another shadow on a team, they might go uh, pink mohawk, and they'll be easy to see. Basically, that is also why she's uh, looking to hire a bunch of nobodies. That makes sense as well. What sort of allowance are you prepared to make for expenses incurred in the course of our action? She raises an she eyebrow. Raises Rob immediately looks at her with like a little bit of disguised hope. And at this point it sounds like you're trying to roll negotiation. Sure. Uh, those of you who wish to assist can can roll their dice first. So to see how many uh, bonus ranks you get. I think that's one of the few social skills I. Yeah, I don't have any rank sense. I would not be helping much. I mean, you could always just default to straight charisma minus one. I can't imagine what would go wrong. <clears throat> nope. I guess Sue's alone in this. That's fine. You don't have to. Um, I'll roll. Haha! Uh -huh. I was super helpful, guys. <laughs> Apparently, that, <laughs> that, that like girl that talk like, about being hit on and then being a douche paid off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In, In spades. Okay, so what does this mean for my roll? So you have how many ranks in negotiation? More than four? I have 13. No, that's how many dice you have. That's how many ranks. Oh, how many actual in negotiation? Rights? I have, I have six with a plus two in bargaining. Okay, so you're going to get six extra dice from the people that team worked here, and your social limit will go up by two. Okay. And everybody kind of got in and was talking during that. Normally, <laughs> like, you at least have to try and participate, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Nice. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and level Seattle. It'll be fine. Man. Alright, so since All right. negotiation is a bit of an abstraction, what is it that you would like to get out of her? I'm trying to figure out how much she's prepared to cover in terms of our expenses that we might incur during the run. Alright, so let's talk Equipment, about expenses bribes, real quick. Are you going to provide her an itemized receipt list for how many illegal things you purchased? Mm, it may not say the real names of the things we purchased, but I can provide that if she likes. Um, 12,000 in New Yin and toiletries? How did this happen? <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't say bribes. It would say something like incentives, but yeah. Um... Because usually it kind of goes into like just a, a flat upfront chunk of money for you guys to do whatever yeah. you want with. 
If you As want to provide like a meeting. itemized list to be reimbursed for and start that kind of paper trail, I would be happy to write that kind of stuff down. If, if she prefers <laughs> to do it in terms of like a, a per diem or something, so, you know... It'd probably just then be we a can... stick with a chunk of cash on it. Okay, uh, yeah, that would work we could for just me ask as well. for a larger upfront payment. That would be a good way to do it. Basically, I'm looking for more money, and the most acceptable way I could think of to ask for more money, since I don't actually know any more details about the dangers or the specifics of the job, was to ask for her to cover our expenses. Yeah, but so generally, I want more money. Yeah, okay. the easiest way to do this, since you're going to chunk a new yen, is try and throw out an idea like what you think would be a reasonable expense coverture for the type of job she's asking you to do. What chunk the difficulty with that is that I have no idea because I still know nothing at all about the job. But you're, well, you know, you're, you're supposed to be bullshitting her. What's that? Your face. You're supposed to be bullshitting her. Well, part of it is, like right now, she has offered you 13000 new yen on the back end. And that's it. Right. So some of this negotiation can't like you got a million heads. So some of this negotiation will increase the amount of money she will give you. Some of this money will some of those hits will be used to get you some money up front because that's not something that she was originally offering. And like if you wanted say um access to a certain kind of vehicle like not specifically for her because you don't know anything about the kind of kind of Johnson that she is or what she has access to. Um, but you could potentially ask for, uh, like in the future, if you're doing a, a job for, let's say, the Ancients who are a Go Gang, and you wanted a couple of bikes to use because you you guys didn't have transportation or whatever, that could be something else you could throw in towards the negotiation. By the way, did we settle that? Do we have transportation? Does some of us, because I'm like vehicle that. There's public transport. No one's saying anything, so I guess we don't have it among our team. Isn't one of us a rigger? Sorry, what was going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm the rigger. I was, I was do, not paying do attention. Do you own a vehicle? I own two vehicles, yes. Is one of them large? It is a van that I have uh, spent the money to outfit for trolls, yes. Excellent. So that that's what we were wondering. But yeah, um, Bams, I was I was basically thinking that that after the negotiation role, if if it were her thing to, basically I'm looking for more. Uh, if we want to specify what that is, that's fine. I was going to default to cash. Um, if she wanted to come back with an offer of, you know, material support or hireling support or anything like that, then I'd be willing to entertain that. Well, I'm just trying to get my guys a lot I mean. more money and help it's a it's an under the situation kind of thing like if she first of all you crush her in the negotiation you got like eight net hits on her or something nuts um so her her positioning from the bargaining on on the deal is super weak so really anything you wanted to ask for as long as it is within reason she would probably be able to provide it now, you said you wanted some money up front. I could give you some money up front, or I could give you a significantly higher back-end payment. And that is, like, instead of 13, I could maybe do, I don't know, like 18 or something like that. Or I could do, like, 2K up front and then 13 on the back-end. Depends upon, like, you have the control here to how you want the situation to play out. Maybe not That sounds great. Let's go, with, uh, let's go with 18 total, and we'll take five of that up front. <laughs> that's getting a little great a little greedy because you did not like we're going from 13 we're almost doubling how much money she's giving you or not doubling like 50 percent more that's, uh, that's uh, just under 50 percent yeah so that so that that's a lot more than uh like the upfront stuff is going to be a lot more than what the, the eight net hits you got okay so what you're telling me is that 50 percent bump is not reasonable no. <laughs> no. Not on the, Not front, on the front end, at least. Well, is it either or, or can we, like, pick half of the back-end payment and half of the upfront payment? Because I, I feel like I would like some cash up front either way. I, I can give you cash up front and a significantly lower um, total. It'd be, like, 15 total. Or I can give you 18 on the back. 
Wait a second. When when we were talking about this, I'm I'm sorry. Um, when I when I said um, okay, I, I I got you here. So the problem with this is that um, what I wanted uh, was five k, or rather, so eighteen k per um, a total of five k would be up front for expenses. Oh, so like a thousand. Up, up, yeah, a thousand a piece up front. Yeah. Does that sound reasonable to everybody for expenses? It's a lot of bullets. I'm okay. Sure. I mean, uh, as far as I understand, I'm I mostly use only guns, and they don't shoot very fast. So yeah, yeah, that's okay. Well, I'm I'm thinking that you know we're we're trying to protect someone. We could do this by hitting the opposing team. Uh, but we might, we might also be prepared to extract this person at some point. We we might need to hide them. We might might need to get a place to hide them that we need to fortify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe someone um, who has like uh, better negotiation skills or like persuasion and shit. So should maybe this person should ask vague questions about the this person's uh, public standing. Is this well known or you know? How much of a difficulty will it be to actually protect this person? Will it be just a wage slave walking around the town, or you know, someone who attends meetings with a lot of people? Some of that will that... come out in the abstraction of the the negotiation role, uh, which oh. I usually skip over because it then usually gets exposition dumped right afterwards. Like you will find yeah. out through that this is a a person of moderate importance to a corporation. And I'm sure at that point Sue's like, "Oh, that's that's more money." All right. You know. Uh, well then, uh, Bamps, I'm going to ask you then. Um, does that sound reasonable to you in terms of outfitting ourselves uh, to prep for this run? I I can do a thousand up front and then seventeen on the back end. Okay, but yeah. does that sound like that would be? Should that be enough of a bankroll for us to do what we need to do? I don't know what, you're, don't going know what you're going to do. Well, neither do I. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You bumped let's, up really high. It's it's a lot more money. Let's just go with it. Yeah, let's let's. That sounds reasonable. We can we can probably make something out of it with that. Like there, there's a whole huge host of the way that things could go here, and I don't have any idea. I can't see the future. And I don't have any rails for you guys to roll down to know what's going to happen. All I, all that I have planned and know is is really about to be revealed to you guys. Um, okay. So I think that, I think that will suffice. Okay. So she will pull a credit stick out of her pocket and kind of toss it onto the table. It's got five thousand new yen on it, and she will come to an agreement. Reach back <laughs> into her pocket, pull out a little. Um, like trade projector and put it on the uh, the table and it'll blow up a picture of um, downtown Seattle in particular the convention center um, and then she'll you know kind of stand back up cross her arms behind her back this is downtown Seattle as I'm sure you're all mm -hmm. aware of this weekend there is a weapons world expo going on wherein a number of important people in the arms dealing business will be present. She'll click a button in a arm like behind her back and a picture of a an older human man. Um, let's go looks like late 50s. He's a random name generator. Yeah, Unimportant there. NPC number seven. There's a there's a guy. His name is Sergeant Ernest Olson. Um, she describes him as a a charismatic older man who is important to the marketing division of the Northwestern Quadrant of the UCAS. He is not normally based out of Seattle however he will be coming in to go to this convention two squats on the uh, 
the map for the lack of a better term are going to lock up. These are two hotels that are directly connected via breezeways over the street to the convention center. One is directly across the street. The other one is, um, it goes across the street into like a parking garage and then across the street again into a, another hotel. He will be staying in the far one and he will be coming in Wednesday evening. From there, it, it will be up to you guys to make sure that he leaves. He will be seeing a number of different presenters while he is there and making a number of different deals. This is someone in the in a corporate marketing department and he has the title of sergeant? Yeah, because he works for Ares. I thought as much. Did she make that explicit? No. But we would be smart enough to know that. Uh, you guys have lived in the, the corporate world, the corporate dominated world for your entire lives, so I kind of assume that that's uh, there's enough here. He's sergeant. He's marketing. It's a giant weapons thing. Um, okay. Um, I. She does not have his full itinerary because that is not uh, set in stone, as it were. She's going to kind of look around you guys. Does she have all the pieces that are set in stone? Yeah, she can give you a bit of a schedule. And from that, we can derive which pieces would be unknown? Yeah, you guys can take some time and study that. Okay, do we know anything about the convention place at the moment? So how, how well is it defended? What kind of like uh, guards and shit? Off the top of your head, you do know that, one, it's a weapons convention. So... Just about everybody there is probably going to be packing some kind of weaponry. So that is something to consider. There will also be a large amount of things on display. Have you guys ever been to like a, like a Comic Con or just a, a convention of any kind? Yeah. All right. So one of you. Great. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I was needed. <laughs> That's fine. No, um, no, no. I, I was. I was. I was just away. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So there is going to be like a big exhibit hall that's going to have just all kinds of wonderful guns and ammo and things on display. There's going to be a couple of side like uh, conference rooms where people will be talking about new models of this or basically anything to do with guns, history, auctions, etc., etc. Um, and that's going to be kind of going on there. The convention hall itself will be open like 10 to, 10 to 8. Um, you do know that you're, you are permitted to open carry. However, they will put a um, kind of like a, a zip tie thing around your, your gun so that you can't pull the trigger. It actually physically blocks the trigger from being pulled back. And it will have a, uh, an anti-tamper thing in it that will, you know, if you mess with it so that you can fire your gun, it will alert people. Which, you know, will not be good. Um, I'm curious to know why his employer is not protecting him. How do you know that it's not? Well, what I mean is, uh, if, she, if she were hiring us for the other side of this, that would make sense that you would use Shadowrunners. Right. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why a corporation would hire deniable assets to protect one of their corporate assets. Do you do you ask her that, or are you just trying to figure it out? Is there a way that I can ask her that without being offensive? I mean, you could just ask her. It's not like, well, why do you need us for? Um... But you could totally frame it in a in a way of like, does he have any additional yeah, that's, personnel? Yeah, I'd I'd be wanting to find out if there are going to be any uh, corporate resources protecting him as well. If we would be interfacing with them at all, that sort of thing. So she will poke up to uh, two pictures of two. Uh, one is a troll, slick suit 
mirror sunglasses, nicely done hair, and just a permanent frown on his face is what it looks like. He does not look like he has had a happy day in his life. The other guy is a... Um, let's go with an elven female. Younger side, but much more stylish, much more uh, alive. Less grumpy sourpuss, more just normal person, perhaps more approachable. She does also mention that their personal devices will have um, matrix security provided by their parents' company. Okay. What was the nature of the threat that was made against them? Against him? Just, I'm going to kill him? Or were there any other bits? Does he plan to do it during the convention, for example? There is a, a bit of a file that she will put in front of you guys that is full of... Does anybody have any kind of corporate knowledge? Uh, I do. Either. Go ahead and roll that for me. Gee. Not that I don't know it offhand, but let me look that up real quick. Yep. Uh, that would so be... if I have Evo Carpet Politics 6, so that means I roll 6 dice, or is it like less because it's maybe not Evo? So you're gonna roll uh, your knowledge skill plus your either your logic or your intuition, whichever one you linked it to. Um, given as God damn, you did it backwards. That's why. Oh, okay. I was like, hold on. So three successes. Um, given as it's corporate Evo, is it is it Evo Corporation or is it corporate with an Evo specialization? Well, you sort of said to change it into corporate politics Evo, so it seems like a specialization, but I didn't actually put points into specializing, so I guess it's about Evo mostly. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and roll it, and we'll see how much it matters. Because if you roll, like, poop. Okay. Um, um, poop, yeah. <laughs> so, good news and bad news. Um to most of you who aren't super affiliated with uh, corporate bullshit, it looks kind of like, how are you getting this out of that? But Sue, because they are a, a negotiator and that kind of stuff, and Rig, because he has a bit of the um, the corporate politics, there is about a paragraph of corporate doublespeak that you would use if you were hire, you were writing off an expense for hiring a bunch of people to eliminate a it's, it's just all buzzwords and doublespeak and just bullshit that if you're looking at it like if I condense that a little bit that totally looks like somebody tried to hire somebody to assassinate a guy okay There's even so there wasn't like an open direct threat it was just through careful book bookkeeping they found this probable threat yes Either careful right. bookkeeping or somebody else's sloppy bookkeeping. Do we know who's trying to get them killed? It, all of the stuff in there is very uh, nondescript, but it is. You kind of get the feeling that it was runners that were hired, but not any uh, specific. No, I mean, it's where just did SOP she get that? Where did she get that requisition from? Who's who's requisitioning the runners? She's going to uh, kind of stand back and look at you like there is a another investigation team working on that. Okay. And you you can tell kind of that that she knows more information on that subject but doesn't want to give it up. Um, can I do a judge intentions to figure out why she doesn't want to give it up? Maybe I don't want to press. Uh, sure. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, four successes. Uh, with four... Four successes, you kind of get the idea that she might be doing this off the books herself. Uh, 
Um, that explains all the money. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm afraid I'm going to have to press. Um, that is up to you guys. Now you guys can also that... just have a conversation right here if you want. By the way, yeah. is, doesn't someone who is like uh, matrix oriented uh, can someone like that sort of look up some info online very quickly? So like any details they can find throughout like uh, message boards or shit. Just or, like... rudely get on your phone real quick. I don't know. Something like that. Maybe something will come up. I mean, yeah. you don't even have to pull your phone out. You can just kind of, just kind of. Oh yeah. Screen. Just kind of flip on my AR and. Oh, yeah. What are you? What are you asking for? Uh, well, I'm not asking. I hope you know how to do that. But I don't know. Maybe scan her face, or maybe just you know, for general. Um, I don't know how to do Matrix. I'm a, I'm a shaman. <clears throat> no, I mean, like, what what information do you mean? Or are you asking? Like, what are you looking for? I'm trying to figure out who hired the uh, the hit team. Uh, I gathered that she probably knows more than she's telling us. She says it's under investigation. Um, she knows more than she's telling us, and apparently the reason she's being cagey is because her side of this might not be uh, authorized at a higher level than her. I don't, I don't know why that would be. Plus, any kind of like shadow stuff that could be related around the convention thing, because we have a team, so maybe any runs going on there, either way, or info. Well, that's or not something. something that's, you know, stored online. That's just kind of... You well, know, that's why you, kind of the you don't hack shit. So, let me, uh, let me step to you for a second. Matrix searches have a couple Summer of different thresholds. There's one that's just like a, a minute threshold that's just you literally picking up your phone and Googling, you know, Weapons World Expo 2078 and getting some information about it. Hi. Or you Scared like Googling this lady's picture and that's just super surface level stuff. Your next level matrix search is about 30 minutes and that's you know when you go through like Wikipedia and you set, click through a couple of blue links and then you finally get to like the actual information you want to use? kind of like that. It kind of trims a lot of that bullshit off the top and gets you a little bit more of the actual juicy things. That takes you about a half hour, plus or minus, depending upon how many net hits you get when you do it. That's a threshold three test. The other one is a 12-hour test that is threshold six, and it is scouring the matrix for all kinds of stuff. Um, you could do a couple of surface level searches right here while you guys are having this conversation with your Johnson. See, there. see, thank you, Bams. That's what I said. Can you do that? And because I'm not a matrix person. Yes, but it'll be very surface level things unless you, because your next your next search up is like a half hour, and she's not going to sit there sit. for like a half hour like while you guys are doing things. Well, better that than nothing, I guess. So, uh, can someone show a Decker, Rigger? I mean, about all I could find out is just basic information about her face. I don't know. So, yeah, we're we're gonna have we're gonna have plenty of time to find out exactly who this is after we break from this. Um, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we're getting everything that she can give us up front. Uh, so, I'm looking to find out who did the hiring in terms of like, you know, checking Jack point for postings the few days before or talking to other fixtures we know for people advertising jobs the few days before or whatever we can, we can do that afterwards. I'm just trying to find out what she knows. And you, she is willing to open it up and ask what answer questions. If you want to press her on the, the it being investigated, you are more than willing to do so. Um, I, I got, uh, four hits on a negotiation roll. Oh, no, it, you don't actually have to roll to get it out of her. It's a, like, she will give it up, but it's a, how will things, how will this affect your potential relationship in the future? Because who knows who, uh, when she may return. So, um... You ask her, it's being investigated, and she will come back with a, this was discovered, and while some people do not put a lot of stock into it, it is a situation that can prove advantageous to oneself 
should you prove yourselves exceptionally competent for both yourselves and for me. Now, as to the actual hiring person, I do not know. That is, in truth, being investigated on the internal affairs side of things. But they don't actually believe much more than this, and I'm afraid to tip my hand by asking too heavily or calling in favors. Uh, yes, I understand completely. I appreciate the position that you are in, and I would like you to know that anything we can do to help you in this, we would love to make ourselves available. Uh, would you please, if you are to find out more as a result of this investigation or discovery, uh, please make sure that you let us know at your soonest possible convenience. She'll kind of soften a little bit. Just like... I guess just kind of giving you a, a little bit of a look, because I don't actually have any words for her to say right now. Just all like a... a weighing you. I, I, on subdermal, I just say to the group, it's, it seems like she probably discovered this herself, and us being... Us believing her probably uh, gives us a lot of rapport with this individual. I say we just go with it. And Dante's going to lean forward and just please understand that we only want to increase the chance of success to the maximum possible. That's all that we're asking questions for. Hello. I was wondering. Vamps, did, did you drop off? Uh, did I mute myself like an asshole? I think so, yeah. Oh no, Bams died. Uh, I muted myself like an asshole. Um, did you guys have anything else you wanted to ask her? As she kind of like, you know, Dante, and you guys say that last bit, and she kind of resumes that sh soldier face mask. No, I mean, um, unless someone more outspoken has something to say, then I think. Are we all, uh, are we all good to go? I'm good. Yeah. I mean, it's like wolf time, I think. Yep. Copy that information she gave us onto my phone for future review, but yep. yeah, I'm good. Alright, and with that, let's all take right. our first break. And we will be back in just a couple of minutes.